Good evening. If I may begin the invocation with a brief seasonal reflection. Okay, if I may begin with a brief seasonal reflection. About two and a half months ago, the Jewish people who gave us the gift of knowing a loving God observed their highest holy day, Yom Kippur, the preparation for which includes an examination of their lives and their response to all of the gifts that have been given to them. Currently, Christians are observing the season of Advent, which includes the same examination as they prepare to celebrate what they believe to be the greatest gift given to mankind, the Word made flesh, the birth of the Christ. And so, Lord, we pray. Lord, we pray for the wisdom and for the humility to truly examine our lives and our response to all of the gifts that have been given to us by you, by our country, and by others. Lord, we have the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They were given to us by you, they were declared by our country, and they are guaranteed by all of the men and women who have stood up to defend and protect us. And we especially owe those who gave us their most precious gift, their life, in defense of our freedom. And so, Lord, in our response, we ask, are we doing our part to build a better world? Lord, we ask, are we doing our part to build a better country? And Lord, in our response to them, we ask, are we doing our part to build better communities? Communities imbued with their character, communities alive with their selfless spirit, communities in which they would have wanted to raise their families. Lord, we ask for your support and guidance in our response. And finally, Lord, we pray that for our country and for our communities, we may always answer your call, as Isaiah did, and all of the men and women who defend and protect us, both in the military and as first responders did, when you asked, who shall I send and who will go for me? And they all stood up and answered, here I am, send me. And if not me, then who? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of colors. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Master of Ceremonies for the 2017 If Not Me, Then Who Gala, Fox News correspondent Griff Jenkins. Wow, I like that pep music. Where do we get that? Very strong. Good evening and welcome to the sixth annual If Not Me, Then Who Gala. I'm Griff Jenkins. Before I start, I just saw something really cool. Uh, and I'm going to talk about, this is my first one, but I was backstage or back in this other room and Ryan Mannion, the leader of the Travis Mannion Foundation, gathered her staff, these volunteers from all over the country, and they put their hands together in anticipation of delivering a fantastic night tonight and they did a chant, if not me, then who? John Deneau, the new chairman of the board, will you come up here and help me do this? I want to ask you guys, because are you excited, by the way? Is anybody excited for this? We got to get this started off right. And what Ryan was doing with her staff, they're a team. That's what they do. And the cause that we are getting together for tonight, we are a team tonight. And we are going to raise the roof. And John, what are we going to do? We're going to do a chant. And I, I want everyone up. Everyone up. Now it's going to be one Two, two, three, three then we're going to do, two, if, if not, not me, me then, then who? And we want them to holler their brains out because Ryan's staff was fired up. And I think these folks are as fired up. What do you think? Let's do it. We only get one shot at it, right? Are you ready? Yeah. Hold on. I don't think they're ready. Are you ready? Yeah. John, lead us. One, two, three. If, if not, not me, me then, then who? All Woo! right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right, all right. Let me get back to this. All right. I'm excited to be here tonight as we take a look back at 2017 and all that we've accomplished together this year. I am thrilled and honored to serve as MC for this inspirational evening because it's been a bucket list thing for me to come. And the fact that when I finally got asked after many years of being involved here, I get to be the MC on the first night, that absolutely kicks ass. I just got to tell you that part. Don't tell anybody I said that because I work on television and I get in a little bit of trouble. But I digress. I've been a big supporter of Travis Manning Foundation for 10 years now. And most recently, I'm coming off a hard-fought marathon finish with over 300 other uh, TMF Spartans who ran the Marine Corps Marathon. Who ran? Raise your hand if you ran. I had the honor, by the way, of him seeing the dinner, and I confess that I had not trained properly. I had been a little busy with some natural disasters. So I got to meet some of the people tonight and see their faces because I saw their backs in the back of their sneakers from running behind them the entire way. So congratulations to everybody who ran the Marine Corps Marathon on Team Travis and Brendan. Thank you very much. Round of applause for those guys. Now, for those of you who are new to TMF or are new to our gala, I want to give you the warmest welcome and assure you that you're in for a very special evening tonight. We're dedicated to recognizing how veterans and survivors are carrying on a legacy of selfless service and in doing so, how we're collectively working to strengthen America's national character. And we begin our program. I'd like to thank some of our key sponsors who have made tonight special without support of such generous individuals and organizations. The If Not Me, Then Who movement would not have the tremendous growth, and it's unbelievably big. We're going to talk about that across the nation. I want you to hold your applause as I name them uh, all. First and foremost at the honor level, Johnson & Johnson. At the champion level, we have Astrodynamic, the Carlisle Group. Goldman Sachs. Oh, what the hell? Go ahead and applaud all the way through it. J. Walter Thompson, Penn Medicine, Don and Laura Morell, Peretta and Orr Inc., Barbara. At the challenge level sponsors, we have the Ashton Fund, John Bardis, Beckton Dickinson and Company. Give it up for Beckton Dickinson and Company. Come on now. College of the Ozarks, Comcast, MC Universal, the Gorski family. The McCausland Foundation, PNC Bank, RTI, PNC Bank over there, you're allowed. Under Armour, 
West Pharmaceutical Services, and the list goes on and on. We want to extend our thanks to the integrity level and individual sponsors here with us this evening. Fortunately, there are too many to name them all. We are grateful for your support and for making tonight's event such a success. And finally, I want to take a minute to recognize the members of our Spartan Society who are here with us. Now, the Spartan Society is a very special Travis Manion Foundation elite recognition program to honor and thank our donors who help advance the foundation's mission through generous financial support and putting your heart into it. You'll know their support, you'll know their Spartan Society members by the little pin they're wearing. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little Spartan, it's silver, and you can get one. We want you to join us as Spartan Society members. There are two iPads set up outside the ballroom, so stop by, speak to our staff, talk to anybody wearing one of these, and they will help you get into the Spartan Society. It is something that you want to aspire to, and you can actually do it with your wallet if you just jump on board with me. Now, please join me in giving a warm round of applause to all of those sponsors and all of the generous uh, contributors. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart and everyone's here, thank you. Now, a little bit about me. I don't think it should come as any surprise when I tell you 2017 has been quite a year for all of us. I spent a good bit of my year covering a few hurricanes, Irma, Harvey, and a few riots and a few protests. I even had to cover, standing outside of an NFL stadium, some unbelievably disrespectful protests, but I'll leave it at that. And, you know, we are at this moment uh, in the country, I, I, I started this day at 4 a.m. on Fox News Channel reporting about a senator from Minnesota that would soon resign because he lacked moral character. So suffice it to say that our country needs unity and strength of character now more than ever. And this is why I feel so strongly about the Travis Manion Foundation's mission. This is why I wanted to be a part of this. This is why every single time my phone rings and Ryan Mannion or Tom Mannion or John DeLome or anyone else involved in this organization is on the other end, I answer after the first ring because I know that it is a bigger, uh, I can be a part of something bigger than myself, and it is a time when we need somebody uh, uh, to step up into this role more than ever. If there was ever a time when young adults need strong models to emulate again, this is it, and as a father of two daughters, there's not a day that doesn't go by that I try and preach to them. Now, about 10 years ago, after the death of First Lieutenant Mannion, this organization went on the hunt for those values and those role models. And guess where they found them? In the military community, right where it had started. It became abundantly clear that the people best positioned to strengthen the values of this country were the exact people who had dedicated their lives to defending it in the families and communities that helped them do just that. And at the helm of this critical character movement is someone who has shared the message of if not me, then who, from everywhere to, from high school classrooms throughout the U.S. all the way to Capitol Hill, and she's even been on Fox News and will be on Saturday, so tune in early. I want to tell you that I know that Travis Manion's mother, Janet, would be so proud, as would Travis himself, of his sister, Ryan Manion. And I am honored to call her a friend. Ryan, would you please come on up here? The president of the Travis Manion Foundation, Ryan Manion. Thank you, Griff, for that introduction. Secretary Rumsfeld, General Dumford, and all of our distinguished guests, we are honored that you could join us here tonight. Thank you for your dedication to improving the lives of veterans and survivors, while also ensuring that the next generation is imbued with the character of these brave military veterans and their families. It's such an honor to be here with all of you tonight and celebrate our annual If Not Me, Then Who Gala. Tonight is about legacies, how we honor them, how we build them, and most importantly, how we live them. In full disclosure, I don't know how much thought I would have given to this concept of legacy had it not been for losing Travis at a very young age. How many of us truly take a hard look at our lives and ask what we'll leave behind until we are confronted with tragedy. 
Travis's death forced me, in a very real way, to take a hard look and ask those important questions. It's unfortunate that I share that experience with several of you in this room tonight who were compelled to ask that same question after the loss of a loved one. But like so many things, I have learned that this is just another gift that Travis has left me with. Not just his own legacy, which he created in such a short time, but he also left me with the gift of wisdom and perspective to think about what that word would mean in my own life. In the decades since we began TMF, I learned a couple of really important lessons, and I want to take a minute to share them with you tonight in hopes that they'll inspire you as they have in me. First and foremost, legacies aren't simply what is left after death. They aren't residual effects or natural consequences of a life well lived. They aren't passively created or organically developed. Instead, they are something that we build day in and day out, intentionally, with vision and purpose. You'll hear tonight from some incredible individuals in our community who understand this perfectly well. They began with a strong vision for what they would contribute to this world, and they set about making that contribution, defining their character in the small moments, and gradually cementing their character in the larger ones. This is no surprise, of course. We wouldn't begin a long trip with just the hope that we'll arrive at a desirable destination. We plan, we know the exact place we want to land, and we employ all our resources and energy in support of reaching that final place. Building a legacy is no different. And contrary to what we tend to think, it's far more about looking forward than it is about looking back. To all of our members in this room, Thank you for answering the question of what will your legacy be with action. You have strengthened your community through Operation Legacy Service Projects. You've united communities through 9-11 Heroes Runs. You've developed character in the next generation through Character Does Matter. You've served in locations all over the globe through expeditions, and you've fueled all of this by generous donations. I can assure you that these are not empty gestures. These are the foundation of legacy building, and they are absolutely critical in the effort to define ourselves both as individuals and as a nation. And this is the second lesson that Travis taught me. Building a legacy requires a community. It is not an individual effort. Those of you who have worn the uniform of this country learned this lesson far before I did. In fact, I learned it secondhand from my brother. Travis was in absolute awe of the sense of unity that bound him to his fellow Marines. To civilians like me, he sometimes struggled to articulate the strength of camaraderie and community that the military created. He likened it to the Spartan community immortalized in the book Gates of Fires and then the movie 300, a group of diverse individuals whose differences disappeared when they stood shoulder to shoulder to defeat an enemy and accomplish a mission, a group who would do anything for one another and anything for their shared purpose. To Travis, that was at the core of being a Marine. To me, that is at the core of being an American. We are nothing if not a group grown from diverse experiences and backgrounds, but defined by our collective unity and strength. And as a country, every day we are challenged to stand shoulder to shoulder to defeat the enemy and accomplish the mission. But who is our enemy and what is our mission? At TMF, we strongly believe that the most important mission our nation is charged with at this moment in history is to build a legacy of character that will last for generations. 
We are more than inflammatory words, that, words that, and events that divide us as a country. We are more than the incidents of violence and disrespect that overtake the nightly news. We are more than celebrity. We are more than politics. So what is the enemy? Anything that divides us. And what is the mission? To build a legacy that is defined by character. It is the community that accomplishes this goal, not merely the individual. And again, we achieve this by looking forward and not looking back. It is important to know that we stand on the shoulders of giants whose families join us in this mission. Tonight, we remember Captain Scott Craven, United States Air Force, Private First Class Justin Ray Davis, United States Army, First Lieutenant Matthew Davis, United States Marine Corps, Lieutenant Valerie Capillaire Delaney, United States Navy, Sergeant Kendall Frederick, United States Army, Corporal Albert Gettings, United States Marine Corps, Lieutenant Commander Landon Jones, United States Navy, First Lieutenant Robert Kelly, United States Marine Corps, Lieutenant Seal Brendan Looney, United States Navy, Captain Jesse Melton, United States Marine Corps, Captain Carl Mills, United States Army, Lieutenant Chris Mosco, United States Navy, Lieutenant Commander Michael Phipps, MD, United States Navy, Sergeant Kirk Strzeski, United States Marine Corps, and First Sergeant Daniel Wirth, German Special Forces, KSK, NATO Command. With the families of these heroes, please stand and be recognized. I want you all to know that each and every person in this room is here tonight because we all believe in living lives worthy of your loved one's sacrifice. America's fallen heroes have entrusted their legacy to us. Through the strength of this community, we will not just protect and honor them, we will also build and strengthen them. Thank you for all that you do to help us achieve this mission. I sincerely hope that you enjoy this evening's program and the models of character whose stories we share with you tonight inspire the same desire to build your own legacy. Together, we will honor the fallen who have gone before us, develop those who will come after us, and strengthen this great country that unites us. Thank you. How about that, Ryan Mannion, a remarkable woman. And as she spoke so eloquently to all the families that just stood, you're the reason why every bad story I have to cover in the news, I am reassured in the fiber of our nation and know that for my children and grandchildren, we are going to be okay. In fact, I just want to also acknowledge that all of the Gold Star families that just stood this evening uh, received a stained, a stained glass gold star, which was customized with the name of their fallen hero. These gifts were made by students at the College of the Ozarks, where Ryan Mannion and Amy Looney were on hand earlier this year to help unveil the Missouri Gold Star Family Memorial on campus. So that's pretty cool. Well done. I applaud that. The stars were a small way for the students to pay tribute to those who have given the ultimate sacrifice and to let the families uh, know that their legacies will live on forever. And that microphone is not for me. 
But fortunately for you, it is for someone else who I want to bring up on the stage who has taken home a number of prestigious songwriting awards, including the BMI John Lennon Songwriting Scholarship Competition, the International Acoustic Music Awards, and the Rocky Mountain Folk Fest Songwriting Competition. She's also the cousin of Travis Manion, here to perform Bruce Springsteen's Starry Song, written for uh, his fallen hero friend, Liz Longley. Liz, come on up here. Titanic to be one of a kind But many ships have ruled the sea They built the Eiffel Tower to stand alone But they could build another if they please the Taj Mahal, the pyramids of Egypt Are unique, I suppose But when they built you, brother They broke the mold this world is filled with many wonders under the passing sun But sometimes something comes along You know it's for sure the only one the Mona Lisa, the David, the Sistine Chapel Jesus, Mary and Joe But when they built you, brother broke the mold when they built you brother it turned dust into gold when they built you brother they broke the mold they say you can't take it with you but I think that they're wrong cause I woke up this morning and I knew Something big was gone Gone into that dark ether Where you're young and hard and cold When they built you, brother They broke the mold Turn your ashes to the earth. I know you'll take comfort knowing you've been roundly blessed and cursed. But love is a power greater than death, it's songs and stories told. Just like when they built you, brother, they broke the mold. That attitude's a power. Stronger than death and I'm burning her stone cold Just like when they built you, brother a feat not known to mankind, and that was performing a song by Bruce Springsteen better than the boss himself. Well done. Thank you, Liz. All right, we're going to break in just a minute for dinner, and uh, it's good. Ciao. You're going to like it. For many of you, you may just be disappointed it's not an MRE bag, but you're going to like it anyway. And during the time we're breaking for dinner, I want to encourage you to go outside the main ballroom and go to our registration tables and learn about this pen I talked about, the Spartan Society. 
They've got folks out there that will take your tax deductible donation. They'll tell you all about it. And it would be my hope, my desire and goal that every one of you will walk out of here tonight wearing one of these on your dress or lapel pin. That would be fantastic. For those of you who took photos as well, you can get your photos out there. In the, in the meantime, while you have dinner and sign up for the Spartan Society, you can listen to the stylings of Bo Jess. Bo Jess, take it away. Enjoy dinner and sign up.
Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue our program in five minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue our program in five minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The program is about to begin.
start heading toward your tables, it's time to sit back down. Or I'm going to get Red Ramos up here to start busting some heads. Ah, there we can hear some. Please uh, start taking your seats, start taking your seats. I know there's a lot of discussion going on about a certain football game. Is that, there's a football game on Saturday, right, Bev? Oh, yes. The, the knife on the glass thing. Do that again, whoever that is out there. Yeah, go Nate. So I just, you know, at the break was chatting with people, and half of my conversations were with, particularly with this, it's Tom, right? So Tom is a Desert Storm veteran, right? He had 23 days left in the Marine Corps when he went into Desert Storm and was a ground pounder. But how many years have you been going to the Army Navy game? How many? 21? It's 21 years. It's so many years he's voting or, or rooting for Army, he says. So let me just do a, an unofficial, unscientific poll. Who thinks Army's going to win? The chairman of the board standing up there. Now, who thinks Navy's going to win? Oh, boy. Red's over here whistling. Are you kidding me? Well, I hope it's a good game. And uh, anybody who wants to bet on uh, Navy or Army, uh, I'd be glad to take your wagers. I'll just play the bookie. All right, all right. I hope everybody have a good dinner? Yeah, I told you it's going to be good. Well, look, at this point, it's time to get the program started again. I want to bring up on the stage someone who I think I know who he may be rooting for on Saturday. You may figure it out, too. He is a true thought leader when it comes to empowering veterans in their post-military lives. He is a graduate of the Military Academy at West Point, a U.S. Army veteran, and the vice chairman and board for Travis Manion Foundation, and he serves as the chairman and CEO of Johnson & Johnson. I thought so. And we're going to make news if he roots for Navy. But I digress. At Johnson & Johnson, he expands the legacy of the health and well-being of veterans, a legacy that dates as far back to 1898. His company, Johnson & Johnson, is a title sponsor of Travis Manion Foundation's Character Does Matter program. And through it, J&J veteran employees are connecting with young adults in their local community as CDM mentors, enriching the lives of veterans and inspiring the next generation of leaders to live a life of character. He really doesn't need introduction to this uh, audience because he is truly one of Travis Manion Foundation's hero. Alex Gorski, please come on up here. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Now, is this not the coolest night of the year or what? How about it, huh? You know, every time I come here, I think, where else in America can you go and just see everything that is good about our country? You know, this is the place where 240 years ago, our forefathers you know, basically wrote out the very principles of what we're about in the United States. It's a place where we come tonight and you know, look at the topics that we're talking about. Instead of all the social media crap that you see day to day, we're talking about patriotism. We're talking about duty. We're talking about our country. We're talking about selfless service, humility. And it's, it just makes me feel so good to be not only a part of the Travis Mannion Foundation, but to be in our country and frankly, to be here at this time for our country, because I think it represents such an important uh, ideal for many others to be thinking about today. I couldn't be prouder, and so I just want to say thanks to all of you for being here and sharing tonight, and give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> Next, look, I, I've got to do a few thank yous. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a kid that came from the Midwest, from a big family, and that was lucky enough to get into West Point, and, uh, and you know, 
going to the academy, serving my country, frankly opened up doors that I could never have dreamed of. And there's no way I would be doing what I am at Johnson & Johnson were it not for my opportunity to serve my country. And, uh, and, and, and as I stand up here tonight, I also know that there's no way I could do what I do as the CEO of Johnson & Johnson without 130, 140,000 employees around the world who get up every day trying to do their best to help people live longer, healthier, and happier lives. And so I'd just like to take a moment to recognize the Johnson & Johnson employees who are here who are making a big difference in so many different ways. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do for us and for patients around the world. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. You couldn't make me more proud. You know, the next, um, I just want to do a big thank you to Ryan and Tom. Uh, and I say this every year, I think, can Ryan get any better? And, you know, knowing, having known Ryan from the time when she was, I think, in junior high school, when she used to babysit for our son, and to watch her grow and develop, not only as a young woman, but as a mother, as a leader, uh, as somebody who's making such a difference, uh, it's really pretty remarkable, Ryan. And I know your dad is incredibly proud, but I know your mother's up there in heaven, smiling from ear to ear, and all of us are also incredibly proud of the impact that you've had, that you continue to have. So let's give Ryan a big round of applause as well for all that she stands for. Yeah, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell a quick Janet story, because by now all of you have seen that bottle of Basil Hayden on your table, and you go, what the hell are they doing passing out a bottle of bourbon? You know, we've already had a bunch of wine. And for those of you that have had a chance to either attend our tailgate, what is now the Travis Mannion Foundation tailgate, you know that for many years we had this tradition where right before the game we would all get together and would line the shot glasses up, we'd bring out the Basil Hayden, and I'd always say, now this is not the Jack Daniels that you drank in high school. This is really good bourbon. And we'd pour around, and you know, we'd all stand there, and it really wasn't about beat Army, beat Navy. It was about thanks to all the men and women, frankly, who put themselves in harm's way so that we could be at an event like this to have such a great time. And I'll never forget, one year we were doing that, we got to the last pour, and there was probably about that much, okay, maybe that much left in the bottle of the Basil Hayden. And I went to hand the last shot glass to Janet, and Janet said, shot glass, hell. She kind of put it on the ground. She grabbed that bottle and tipped that bad boy up. <laughs> Just like a, tr a true Marine wife and uh, mom. And she, she did that whole thing, and I said, damn, woman, that's, a, that's a, quite a swig. And... Uh, you know, we went in and, and that, but, you know, to me, that was the spirit of Janet. You know, she was always there. She was ready to have a good time, ready to do a challenge. But it was all in the spirit of thanking the men and women who are serving, you know, our country. So, you know, look, as we're here tonight, we're incredibly fortunate because I think everyone in here has served in some way. You've served in the military. You've served by supporting the military. And, you know, to be here in this great venue at the Union League with so much history, and with so many great Americans is pretty awesome. But we can't forget that over the past several years, in addition to the people in this room, there's been about two and a half million people who have served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And while many of them are going on doing awesome things right now, you know, they're, they're driving our economy. They're making a difference in communities and towns you know, throughout our country. Some of them are still hurting. And too many of them still haven't been able to fully integrate. Too many of them haven't quite found their way back, and they've got some challenges. And unfortunately, too many are taking their own lives. And that's unacceptable, particularly for those who have put themselves in harm way, harm's way to protect our freedoms, again, so that we can do things like this great event tonight. And so, in, in recognizing that while we've made a lot of progress, there's still a lot of work to do, this year a group from the Veterans Administration, sponsored by Secretary Shulkin, as well as some people from Johnson & Johnson who in their spare time raised their hand and said, you know what, I want to get involved in something bigger than me and help make a difference. We're able to work with a, in a public-private partnership. They made a, a call. We actually got Tom Hanks involved to put together a public service announcement 
to make sure that the rest of the country, the other 99%, isn't forgetting about that 1% that served. And we just want to share it with you today. In the fabric of America, they are the toughest threads, our bravest and most selfless. They raised their hands, stepped forward, and served for each other, for you, and me. One of the first things they learned was the code that every service member lives by. Leave no one behind. Now all of us need to live by it too because some veterans are being left behind. 20 of them take their own lives every day. Why? It's not simple. It never is. What matters is that we're there for them, just like they were there for us. A handshake, a phone call, a simple gesture make a big difference to a veteran in crisis. Learn how to be there for a veteran at BeThereForVeterans.com. Honor the code. Be there. Leave no one behind. To be part of a much larger campaign and what's really important for everyone in here to understand is we can make a difference. And sometimes it's not just the big advertisement or, or PSA, but it's the, it's the call that we make to remember the person down the street or the friend that we went to school with who may not be doing so well. And it's that kind of connectivity, community support, outreach. And it's why organizations, frankly, like the Travis Mannion Foundation and other public-private partnerships can really make a difference at the ground level. And we think it's critical that organizations like this one come together and continue to try to meet these evolving needs of not only veterans and service members, but their families. And I know that when we work together, nonprofit organizations and, and, and other associations, we can make a difference. Because frankly, those kind of statistics are unacceptable. And to make that possible, we've also got to make sure that we recognize the organizations that are making a difference. And they're really having a meaningful difference in the lives of service members and their families. And here tonight, we have a number of organizations that were previous Travis Mannion Foundation Community Leadership Award winners alongside Johnson & Johnson. I just want to recognize them. So after I do, hold your applause and we'll uh, clap very loudly and cheer for all of them. Comcast, NBC Universal, J. Walter Thompson, and the Carlisle Group. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much for what you do. So the next part of uh, my role in tonight's event is pretty special, um, and that is I get a chance to uh, introduce and celebrate our honored guest. And this, my friends, is a true American hero. I mean, this is somebody that has served their country, our country, for over 60 years. Started as an aviator and a flight instructor in the United States Navy back in 1954. And his career has spanned several generations of our country's leaders. He served as a kind of, if you ever wake up and feel in the I'm not worthy category, he started out by serving as, in several different terms as a congressman. He was a U.S. ambassador to NATO. Then he went on to be the White House Chief of Staff under President Ford. He was the pre presidential envoy to the Middle East for President Reagan. And then he decided to be the CEO of a couple Fortune 500 companies. He was chairman of another company and was awarded our country's highest civilian award the Pres Presidential Medal of Freedom Award. Now let's take a look at the amazing work that he and the foundation named after him, the Rumsfeld Foundation, is doing today.
So you yourself were a wrestler, and as you know, Travis was a wrestler, and I remember my first time meeting you, we came to an Army-Navy wrestling match. I think I was probably cheering for the uh, Navy. Yeah, I'm sure you were, <laughs> yes. And you went and spoke to the team. You know, it's interesting to see full circle. Uh, yeah. Who would have thought, you know, that night, where would we be today? I watched uh, Travis wrestle, but uh, you would know far better than I about his entire life and the kind of example he set for others and, and what you believe he contributed. The Rumsfeld Foundation has been a strong partner of Travis Mannion Foundation for more than seven years. They have generously supported TMF's Character Does Matter program, which empowers veterans and families of the fallen to develop character in future generations. What we try to do is to find charities that relate to the military that are doing things that we think are important. Your program has veterans or the families of veterans going out and helping to familiarize society, particularly with young adults, I think is a, is a healthy thing, a good thing, and we're happy to support it. The mission of the Rumsfeld Foundation is to encourage leadership, public service, and free political and economic systems, both at home and abroad. And they are committed to providing opportunities for rising leaders and honoring those who serve this country. It is important that people in our society better understand the United States Armed Forces, the sacrifice they make. The idea that character does matter is important. That's something we think is, is worthy to support, and we're pleased you're doing what you're doing. So ladies and gentlemen, here to accept the 2017 Community Leadership Award on behalf of the Rumsfeld Foundation is the former Secretary of Defense himself, the Honorable Donald Rumsfeld. Well, I tried to be, well, it's a good paper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got it there. My goodness, thank you. My goodness, Alex, thank you. Griff, you do a terrific job also. It's impressive. I, I, as one who has spent a couple of decades in the private sector, I must say that I have a, Alex, I have a great deal of respect for you and what you've accomplished, your company and what they do for our society. And uh, I certainly thank you for your terrific support of the Mannion Foundation. I um, want to say a special hello to those who are serving in the military, those who have served in the military, and to the families of those who've served in the military, who've also served. So thank you all very much. You have my respect. <laughs> General Dunford, four stars in the United States Marine Corps, There are so few people who get that far up the ladder. And I must say that it is good to see you. It is embarrassing that when I see a four-star general or a four-star admiral, I still look down at my shoes. <laughs> and I wonder if they're shined. And when I saw you earlier in the reception, the first thing I did was look at my shoes. I said to myself, not bad for a civilian. <laughs> but, um, you know, in the old days, the Marines didn't have a real seat at the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And I can remember when I told General Pete Pace, your predecessor, that, that I was going to nominate him to the president to become the chairman uh, of the Chiefs. He said, Mr. Secretary, that shows what a wonderful sense of humor you have. 
Well, we've come a long way, and I congratulate you, and I thank you for your really, truly outstanding service to our country. You are an inspiration. <laughs> Colonel Mannion and Ryan and the Travis Mannion team, congratulations on your, I guess it's close to a decade of work now. That's impressive. Red, you, uh, it's really a privilege to meet you and to say hello to you. Um, I, you certainly have my congratulations on your well-earned recognition. I wonder if we all ought to chip in and buy him a razor. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You look good. You look good. Um, I just flew in from Montana to be here tonight. That's a heck of a long way. I left eagles and owls and moose and deer and pheasants and my wife and two dachshunds, <laughs> cows and calves, and I got into my penguin suit this evening wear that I'm not very used to living out in Montana, I can tell you. But when I heard from Ryan about this evening and the Patriots who would be here, I decided to make that long trek from southwestern Montana uh, so that I could thank also the people who support the foundation and that support military charities. It's enormously important that you do it. And I thank you, each of you for what you do and, and urge you on. Um, to the family members of those who serve and those who have served and of the fallen, you also have served. And God bless you. Now, it's a bit embarrassing to date myself. I was in the Congress in the 1960s, and I had a friend, that's, that's a long time ago. Uh, I had a friend named Milton Friedman, who was a Nobel laureate in economics, and he came to me and he said, Don, we ought to have an all-volunteer military, and you ought to introduce legislation to do that. And I did. And we ended up with an all-volunteer military that happens to be the finest military on the face of the earth. Every single person who serves is doing it because they want to. Not one person today was conscripted, was drafted, was said this is something you have to do regardless of what your personal preference might be. And they're doing what they decided to do because they wanted to do it. And they understand the importance of defending our freedoms. And the American people are deeply grateful. So I was present at the creation of the all-volunteer force. And I'm a believer in it uh, and a supporter of it. But it has a downside. In the old days, we used to have a giant intake. And we'd draft everyone, not everyone. We'd draft many people, males only, not females, uh, certain exemptions for various people, teachers, students, and various others. Uh, and we ended up with a, a fine military, but it was a slightly different military. But one of the downsides of the all-volunteer force is that there are a lot of people in our society who've never served and who may not even know people who've served. And, and despite all the pluses of having a volunteer force, and I'm a strong believer in it, there is that downside. So what the Travis Mannion Foundation does is important. Connecting with people who are not in the military, who haven't been in the military, who may not even know people in the military, is enormously important. And uh, I think that, that that advantage that is 
coming from military charities that interact with the private sector, with people in the private sector, who connect them with the military, the veterans, the military families, the families of those who have fallen, they'll see that that community of ours truly embodies the values of service, of character, and of patriotism. So that's why the Travis Mannion Foundation's Character Does Matter program is such an important initiative. Ryan, what you and your team, Colonel, it's good to see you there. Uh, what you do is appreciated and it's valued. I, uh, I thank those who do the important work of the foundation, but I also th thank everyone in this room who supports the work of this foundation. Thank you very much. Secretary, thank you very much, and thank you for your service. One more round of applause. This is one of America's treasures, Mr. Secretary. Thank you very much. And congratulations to the Rumsfeld Foundation for that well-deserved recognition. Our next speaker is someone who regularly travels the country sharing the story of how two best friends and former Navy Academy roommates, Marine First Lieutenant Travis Manion and Navy SEAL Brendan Looney, defined a generation's sacrifice after 9-11 and how their families carry on in their honor. I first met Colonel Tom Manion walking in Arlington National Cemetery doing a story about Travis and Brendan, and there are a few stories in my life that I've covered for which I was prouder. And it is an honor to be here tonight, as I've mentioned, and it is an honor right now to call Colonel Tom Manion up here. Tom, don't break your other arm coming up here now. There's a couple of steps. But uh, Colonel Tom Manion, come on. Wow, um, what a great night. Um, Mr. Secretary, thank you for those wonderful remarks. General Dunford, so great to have you here with us tonight. Um, hard to believe that, uh, you know, it's been 10 years since we lost Travis, and, and, and this is where we are. You never know where life's going to take you, but, um, you know, f for us as a family to be able to be here and, and to continue to sort of push to make an impact with a legacy of Travis and so many others that have given so much for our country, uh, it, it makes me really proud. And I'm also extremely proud, of course, um, with my daughter, Ryan, and the entire uh, Travis Manion Foundation team. We've got an incredible staff, and the, the growth for me to, to sit back and see where they've taken the organization is just incredible. I know my wife's looking down very proudly right now, um, just seeing what they've done. And we couldn't do it really without so many. You know, we, people talk about, well, how many employees do you have at the foundation? And you talk about that number, but the reality is we have volunteers, you know, thousands of volunteers around the country making an incredible impact and, and really connecting with their communities and connecting our, our, our military community with the, the communities in which they live. And, and we couldn't do that, obviously, without the tremendous support that's here tonight and so many, so many um, across the country that that support what we're doing and it it makes me remember that those early years and talking to Janet and and uh, remembering those five simple words you know if not me then who and I remember talking to a, a radio guy and getting off the the line with them and I said to Janet I, you know I think something's going on here I think there's feels like some kind of movement happening and uh, looking back now I I know that's indeed, um, you know, what we've got going, and it's, it's really um, awesome to see. But I'm here tonight um, on this sixth 
gala event to introduce the honor I always have to introduce the recipient of this year's If Not Me Then Who Leadership Award, which honors uh, a post 9 11 veteran who truly embodies those words that Travis shared, if not me, then who, and really what we in our organization and our communities live by. We're joined tonight by two uh, prior recipients, Kevin Mincio is here somewhere, and Leif Babin. Yeah, please, please a hand for those guys. And, and these guys are really, you know, the embodiment of, of what we are as an organization. It starts with one person doing something exceptional, and that individual's actions inspire others. And the next thing you know, we have an army of individuals performing actions, big and small, that make a huge collective impact and make the world a better place. You know, so each year, that process, you'd think that it would be easy, but it's not because, you know, we've got so, so many that uh, have done so, so much. It's a good problem to have, really. And everywhere we look, we're, we're met with outstanding examples of character, leadership, and service that has really come to define that post-9-11 generation of warriors. They're, they're the ones that sort of inspire me every day to get up and ask that question, if not me, then who? These men and women have an overwhelming hunger to continue to serve their community. They refuse to allow military service to be the only thing that they've done. They're committed to continuing to strengthen their country that they love so deeply, and they're investing in America's next generation through the vision that they have. Former Navy Corpsman Redmond Ramis is a great example of this kind of legacy. Red followed his two brothers' footsteps, enlisted in the Navy at 18 years old. In 2011, while deployed in, with a Marine unit in, in Afghanistan, Red stepped on an IED that resulted in the loss of his life. So place yourself in this situation. You're 22 years old. You're, you're thousands of miles away from home. Explosion goes off, and with minutes, your life has changed forever. What do you do? What do you do? What, what thoughts swirl in your head? Do you cry? Do you scream? Well, if you're red, you put the widest grin on your face, you grab a camera, and you take a selfie. <laughs> That's red. Because you know this is a life-changing moment. And, and you want to capture that. And that's exactly what Red did. Right, Red? Red Ramos is, without a doubt, a man of character. He exhibits strengths like resilience and courage, perseverance and grit. But what we often forget about is that character comes in, in many forms. And, Red's characteristic of playfulness and, and humor make him a worthy leader and an exemplary legacy builder. Just as much as that resilience and that tenacity that he also has. We're absolutely honored to have Red as an ambassador for the Travis Manu Foundation. And we love that he's taken a leadership role in our Character Does Matter program. I'm confident that the next generation of leaders will learn from his toughness as well as his good-natured, positive attitude, just as I have. Let's take a look now at Red and his character in action, inspiring fellow veterans as well as the next generation of leaders. I was tall, I was slim. Now I've got one leg, you see, cause I got one 
I'm born and raised in California. I became a corpsman and served with the Marines because I wanted to help people. And also I wanted to be with the craziest, coolest people in the world. So I didn't want to just be a medic anywhere. I wanted to be a medic with the Marines, and that's why I chose the corpsman. One thing that I stress to everybody, whether I'm speaking to them at my job or I'm doing a presentation with Travis Manion Foundation, is you have to stop looking at failure. You have to stop looking at struggle as a bad thing. It's the exact opposite. Every single time you're faced with any kind of obstacle, you're actually given an opportunity, an opportunity to grow and to succeed at whatever you're trying to do. As a motivational speaker, I sure do tell myself I can't do something quite a bit when it's out of my comfort zone. And so working with a group like this with Travis Manning Foundation, I mean, you just realize you can always push yourself, no matter how much you're hurting. And uh, that in itself makes us all better ambassadors for TMF. Because uh, we've been talking the talk. Now we get to once again walk the walk, quite literally. Rather than running away from all of these scary obstacles and these things that look like struggles, you should be running towards them. You should be finding out what your weaknesses are. And this goes on everything. This goes to your schoolwork. This goes to your actual job, how you treat your family, everything. If there's something that you are afraid to do, something that, that you don't think you do well, that's the exact reason why you should be doing it again and again and again. It's going to grow you in ways that you can't even understand. The extra point I want to give across is you don't have to wait. You, can, you should and can look at any single thing you want to do in life and find ways to attack your weaknesses and put yourself in states of struggle in order to grow whatever you want to grow. This is gorgeous. I need to get a selfie video, sorry. <laughs> if not me, then who means a lot to me. What it really means is just that we should all serve our community. Our, our life is bigger than just one person. You know, my life is bigger than me. Every single thing I do is gonna have a reaction to somebody else. Whether it's positive or negative, that's up to me. So living a life like Travis led, living a life knowing that you should be living, if not me, then who, means you should always be thinking about how you are affecting other people. Ladies and gentlemen, Well, we're, we're certainly fortunate to have him in the fight with us and fortunate to have him also here with us tonight. The winner of the 2017 If Not Me Then Who Leadership Award, Redmond Ramos. Red Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, thank you, Colonel. Thank you, everybody in the Mannion family. And also, thank you, everybody in the Travis Mannion Foundation team. You guys work so hard every single day, day in and day out, and I hope you know we appreciate you. Obviously, I want to say thank you to everybody in the audience. As it was mentioned a bunch of times earlier today, I really, truly hope you understand how important your donations and your generosity is. You seriously are making the world a better place every single time you donate to this amazing organization, Travis Manion Foundation. I also want to say thank you to my future wife, who could not be here today, but motivates and pushes me every day. Uh, she is an LA City firefighter, so she is right. Yeah, I did well. <laughs> and She's actively fighting the fires that I'm sure most of you have heard about all over the news. She's actively doing that as we speak, really showing what Americans do once again in times of struggle. I love America. A lot of people say they love America, but I really, really, truly love America. 
And I don't just love America because of all the amazing opportunities that being uh, born here has afforded me. I love America because of who we are. Ryan Mannion actually said it best. Travis's story is America's story. We all know that Travis Mannion was obviously an amazing individual with an outstanding story. But really, we all have the potential to change the world inside of us. Even though we might not be able to do it on the same grand scale that Travis was able to, we can all help create long-lasting, positive change in our community, in our own way. Two years ago, I remember sitting right there in that chair and looking at uh, Jake being awarded and just being baffled by all the amazing accomplishments he had to his name and all of the thousands of people he was able to help. Never in a million years would I have thought or could I have imagined that I would be standing here today. I feel incredibly undeserving and honestly I'm just simply humbled that somebody would even think to put me in the same category as people like Jake and Mr. Babin, last year's recipient who's here today. I'm still honestly confused. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it entirely. Um, uh, but I would like to think that the reason why I'm up here is because Travis Manion Foundation and I share a lot of the same goals and ideas. We both have this obsession with helping people reach their full potential. And we do this by encouraging them to serve their community. It might seem a little bit backwards to some people, but we all believe that the best way to better yourself is to start by bettering the people around you. When I was injured, I had all the help in the world. Thousands of people came to help me. People on the battlefield came to help me, in the hospitals, and then thousands of volunteers in the years after. America took care of me. They treated me. But believe it or not, there is a such thing as too much help. And when it was time for me to get back in the workforce, all that help was holding myself and other injured veterans back. People seemed afraid to challenge us again. And when I was really trying to get back into the workforce, and when I was really trying to find a meaningful, purposeful, and challenging career again, the help offered by many of these veteran service organizations seemed to be geared more towards coddling us and protecting us than challenging us. So many veteran service organizations all with great intentions, seemed to be obsessed with giving veterans the easy life that they feel we deserved and wanted. Easy? Who the hell said we wanted easy? Who the hell said that all of a sudden after injury, all of a sudden after service, we were supposed to be afraid of challenge? We didn't want easy when we joined the military. We definitely didn't want easy when we went to combat. So why would we want an easy life now? It didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense to a lot of us. But luckily, Travis Manion Foundation understands this. And that's why three years ago, TMF provided me with the tools necessary to help me thrive in my post-military career, to pursue my passions, and be able to serve my community all over again. This life of mine is not about me anymore. I realize that now. This award, as much as I love it, is not about me. I've had my life already. It was a great life. And then I almost died. I got put back together. And now, like a Terminator sent back in time, but armed with hugs and kisses instead of bullets, uh, I have a new purpose. I've been reprogrammed. My purpose now is to show everyone that you can succeed through your struggle. You can succeed through any single struggle that you are facing, regardless of how big and scary that struggle may seem. My purpose now is to motivate and encourage others to create long-lasting, positive change in your own communities through service and character. And when we're asked why we continue to serve, even when we don't have to, our answer is simple. If not me, then who? Thank you very much. Red Rivers, American hero. Thank you. Thank you. 
You know, I, I was talking to Red before this dinner, and uh, I have to speak on behalf of his three brothers. Out of all four boys, they all became Navy corpsmen. And uh, they get really upset when he gets all this love and applause because they said, hey, he stepped on an IED. He's the only one that screwed his job up. <laughs> so on behalf of your brothers, I had to set the record straight. All right, it's time to move on, guys, and talk uh, right now about our younger folks. I want to bring up another leader at Johnson & Johnson and a Character Does Matter mentor who volunteers his time inspiring the next generation of leaders. He is a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Hoorah. All right, you can do better than that. Hoorah. There we go. Whatever. I've had the privilege of running the Marine Corps Marathon with them. And in fairness, I should confess that I usually come in about an hour behind him. Ladies and gentlemen, here to present our 2017 Scholarship Award. Help me welcome Mr. Keith Palmer. Keith, where are you? Get him. Thank you so much, Griff, and good evening, everyone. All right, all right, let, let's try that again. Let me check the energy level in the room. Good evening, everyone. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be here this evening and deeply humbled to be a part of this great event and present the Character Does Matter Scholarship Award once again. I have to say, it was indeed a privilege to tow the starting line at the Marine Corps Marathon, but boy was I glad to see that finish line. <laughs> All I remember when I got to the finish line was saying, Lord, thank you. <laughs> and I'm retiring from marathons. <laughs> It certainly takes a great deal of hard work and dedication to prepare for a marathon. It's not just going out and running 26.2 miles. Don't forget to point two miles. <laughs> you need to properly build your endurance, give greater attention to your diet, rest, and most importantly, listen to what your body tells you. The young man that will be, will be awarded the Character Does Matter Scholarship Award has a similar drive but it is in preparation for something bigger. He pushes himself to excel in school and in athletics, all while supporting his family and keeping focus on building his own character. Oh, and by the way, did I mention he's a high school student? What's remarkable about him is how much he's overcome in the face of adversity. When I learned of Diego's story, I realize our backgrounds are not dissimilar. Through pursuing a good education and with guidance, he's able to realize his potential, as am I. I'm grateful that I've been given the platform through the Travis Manion Foundation to inspire the next generation, to live this type of character, and hopefully I'm able to spark in them the notion that what you do when no one is looking is the true testament of who you are as a person. The renowned Dr. Martin Luther King said intelligence is equal to knowledge plus character, implying that it's not only the knowledge that you have, but what you do with it. When I reflect on my own improbable story, I'm humbled to be a part of the legacy of the Travis Manion Foundation, and thus inspired to be a part of the epiphany of the individuals in our program who come to the belief that character does matter. We acknowledge through the Character Does Matter program that today our society has an overwhelming need to develop strong character in our young adults who will become tomorrow's leaders. I'm sincerely obliged to have been given the opportunity to make a small contribution to the movement. As a veteran, having the opportunity to continue my service after I've taken off my uniform has truly made a difference in my post-Marine Corps life. The Travis Manion Foundation's Character Does Matter program presented by Johnson & Johnson is making this kind of impact for our veterans and the next generation across the country. To get a better perspective of this impact being made, I'd now like to share with you the journey of Diego 
Pinzon Penteche, who is, who is a student at the West Potomac High School in Alexandria, Virginia. In 2014, I moved to the USA. I didn't know anyone, or only my mom and my stepdad. I didn't know any, any English. Since I came here in 2014, I started coming to West Potomac High School. I had to do the junior year for like three years. Basically, it was like I was starting all over in ninth grade. I was like, I want to learn a language. I want to understand what they're talking about. So I decided to like study hard, read books, practice my English. I was like working hard to, to make that goal happen. My normal week is like I, I go to high school. We finish school at 2.55. I get ready and then I start working to, to work until 9 to 10 p.m. My dad is the only one who was paying for everything, so I saw like he was like putting a lot of effort. I wanted to help him, you know, to make him feel like we are supporting each other. Eh, para mí significa que es es un muchacho eh, responsable porque son cosas normales en la vida, cotidianas de la vida de una persona. Entonces, si uno es responsable, puede llegar a hacer buenas cosas grandes. About three weeks ago, I was walking into the Safeway, and I look over and I see this young man, and he's talking to this woman, and he's, she's elderly, and he must have gone to three different bins and looked for things for her and brought them back to her cart, and I realized within about three seconds it was Diego. I first met Diego uh, through the Character Does Matter program. We were giving a presentation here. We quickly realized that uh, about half of the students in the class that we were doing the presentation for couldn't speak English. And Diego volunteered without even any hesitation to stand up and be our translator. He has a beautiful family who also has a career of miles. I think that it speaks volumes the fact that uh, Diego was able to come here and within two years be able to stand in front of his peers and translate. And it was so obvious that he had really taken on that spirit of, if not me, then who? The story that the Troy Smithian Foundation was telling was like really inspirational. I was, I feel like inspired to do that translation, you know what I mean? This is like a good example for all of us who is here in this room to start thinking about what are you doing in your life. What are you going to do? What are you planning to do? Working with Diego has really helped me and given me a purpose. He's into all of our service projects. He's always helping out. He's so generous of his time. It's about integrity, courage, and leadership, because you are the one who is taking the first step, so all the people is going to follow you. The veterans are a good sample for me to keep fighting and like help all the people around, help the community. I take that like, Si no lo hago yo, entonces quién? That means, if not me, then who? This year's scholarship is sponsored by our partners at PNC. And with them, we are proud to present the 2017 Character Does Matter Scholarship Award to Diego Penzan Fintecha. Please help me welcome him to the stage. You're making me really nervous right now. <laughs> okay, so thank you okay, for everything. Good evening, everyone. My name is Diego Pinzon Fontecha, and it is a privilege and honor to me to be sharing with you all tonight what it means to me to receive this award. I feel really grateful and excited for receiving this award. I would like to thank uh, my mentor, veteran, uh, Mr. Gino Farrell, for nominating me for this award. Um, 
and also my teacher and coach, Mr. Jay Ruelas, for all the support and the strong leadership and characters he has shown me. I identify with Troy Smoro, if not me, then who? Right there. Which in Spanish translates as, si no lo hago yo, entonces quien? You want to give it a try? <laughs> I say, si no lo hago yo, entonces quien? Si no lo hago yo, there you go. Okay, so, so I identify with the motto of Travis Meanings as a way to be different from the crowd and to inspire others to live, to live lives they create to help in those in the Travis Morrow has inspired me to have the courage, leadership, integrity, and service to serve those in the community that have not had given the same opportunities that have been given to me. I will use the lesson I have learned from the example of Travis and other veterans to make, my, to make a difference for my family and community. I would like to especially thank my mom, Yolanda Fontecha, who is over there. <laughs> who has sacrificed so much for my sister and I. Thanks to everyone for being part of this life-changing event for me and my family. And thank you, Travis Minion Foundation, for inspiring others like me to make a difference in our communities. God bless America. Congratulations, Diego. What an amazing, amazing story. You know, your mom, Yolanda, said if you work hard, you're going to do great things. Well, guess what, Diego? You're already doing them, buddy. Thank you. All right. It's time for our guest of honor. And you want to hear what he has to say. I first met him on the battlefield in the sands of Iraq. He was a colonel then. He's a general now. He's here with his gorgeous bride, Ellen. And uh, it was amazing to catch up with him. Oh, by the way, he's the 19th chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, only the second Marine to ever get that. And I can tell you he's among the world's fiercest war fighters and the gentlest friends you can ever have. General Dunford, please come up here. Gold Star families, ladies and gentlemen, you'd expect me to say it, but it really is an honor to be with you all today. And, and Secretary Rumsfeld, Red and Diego, congratulations on, on the recognition. Red, uh, when you were up here, you reminded me about why Marines love Navy corpsmen and why we never go home without them. Unbelievable. Uh, really inspirational. And, uh, and for Ryan and Tom and the whole foundation, uh, thanks for the opportunity to be here tonight. But more importantly, uh, thanks for what you do for our families, for veterans, and for making sure that character does matter in the next generation. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the uh, honor of closing the program, and I have the responsibility of closing the program. And I saw Ryan looking at her watch a few minutes ago, and I said, all right, uh, I'll do my part uh, to help her out. If you haven't noticed, Ryan is a bit of a type A personality. Uh, she's very organized, she's very driven, and, uh, and I think we're about 20 minutes late. Um, and so what I'd like to do is just close by maybe uh, making a couple of comments that are related to, uh, to Ryan's uh, very eloquent speech about legacy. Uh, tonight is uh, about legacy, and of course, earlier tonight, we, uh, we saw the pictures and heard the names of those that have left a legacy of courage, of commitment, of selfless service. And, uh, and I would tell you, we're, you know, recognizing our commitment to remember that legacy by just the fact we're gathering here tonight. But I told Tom earlier, the men and women that are in uniform, that are proudly following in the footsteps of Travis and Brendan and Robert and Jesse and Matthew and, and the many others that are represented here tonight, the men and women that have fallen in footsteps are equally committed to remember their legacy. Last uh, November, on the 10th of November, the Marine Corps birthday, I found myself in Iraq. 
And some of the Marines that were there found out I was there, and they invited me to come down and participate in the cake cutting ceremony that's traditional uh, on the 10th of November. And so I flew down to uh, Al Assad in the Anbar province, and, the, and I got off the, uh, the helicopter. And the first thing I saw when I got off the helicopter was, Welcome to Camp Mannion. And then throughout the rest of the camp, there were small reminders uh, of Travis in, in his life. And I spent 10 November with Travis Mannion, and I can tell you that for all the Gold Star families here, there are examples of that all across the military now where we made a commitment to never forget, and we won't. But there's another important legacy that, that actually Ryan reminded me of tonight, and it's the legacy that really now is carried on by those left behind in their sacrifice. Ryan referred to uh, one of Travis's favorite books, The Gates of Fire. In The Gates of Fire, I won't go through the whole story, but The Gates of Fire, of course, talks about the Battle of Thermopylae in 480 B.C., and it's the Persians were invading the Greek city-states, and the king at the time of Sparta had to pick 300 warriors to go up to a mountain pass and stop the, uh, the Persian horde until they could get organized to deal with it. And, uh, and in that book, actually, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting uh, that it was one of Travis's favorite books, and to see Ryan up here tonight, in that book is probably one of the best descriptions of the importance of families and those left behind that I have ever heard. And, uh, and although through most of the book it doesn't say much about the Spartan families and it certainly doesn't say much about the reason why those 300 were selected for that particular mission, which they expected when they assigned those individuals to that mission, that they would probably not come back, you don't find out to the end of the book on how those 300 were selected. And you find out in a conversation that takes place between a widow who approaches the king, and she lost both her husband and her son. Uh, they, were one of the, they were both in that group of 300. And she accosts the king, and she's full of emotion, and she's full of grief, and she says, I don't understand. Why did I give all, and some weren't called to give anything? And the king paused, and he said, uh, well, this is, is going to be a long war, and this is going to require a great sacrifice of our nation. And I actually picked those 300 not based on their own individual strength, because I had thousands of warriors to pick from, all of, which, all of whom could have done the job. I picked those 300 based on the strength of their families. And I knew that their sacrifice, their willingness to endure, would make sure that the nation would be able to endure in the difficult days ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess I, I would just close here tonight by saying that in addition to the legacy that we honor tonight of Travis and Brendan and Robert and Jesse, we also recognize the legacy of Janet and Ryan and Tom and the many others that are here this evening that represent the families left behind. And I'll tell you what I feel after sitting here for the last couple of hours and listening to the testimonies and realizing uh, the impact that the Travis Mannion Foundation is having on the next generation of Americans realizing that the message that we say that we're committed and we'll never forget is carried on by the Travis Mannion Foundation. The thing that I kind of walk away with tonight is uh, I feel pretty good, as, uh, as Diego does, about being an American. And, uh, and despite all the noise that people have referred to here tonight, when I walk away here tonight and I look out at this audience, I listen to the testimonials, and I realize what this organization is about, and particularly the part about character for the next generation, I feel really good, and that's because of the legacy of those left behind, inspired by the legacy of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. So for me, uh, I guess I'd just simply close by saying thanks to all of you here. Thanks in particular uh, to Ryan and Tom for what they have done. And uh, a couple of people have said it, and I, and I, I couldn't help but think it when, uh, when Ryan was speaking. Uh, she has so much of her mother in her. And, uh, and Janet would be so proud uh, to see how the organization has blossomed and grown and the impact that it's having from Houston to San Diego to Coronado to Washington, D.C. and Chicago and all points in between. So God bless you all, Semper Fidelis, and again, thanks.
Once again, to thank the general for being here and thank him for his outstanding leadership to our country and to our men and women in uniform. General, thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, what an amazing evening, and we're almost done. It's almost time to go, and I know you got to get ready for Saturday's game. But you know, before we do that, we do have to remember what everyone on this stage has talked about. And I just want to direct your attention one last time to the screens as we look back at the remarkable work that the volunteers and those that have given their time uh, and effort for Travis Manning Foundation. Please uh, take a look. It's been 10 years since I lost my brother Travis to a sniper in Iraq. My family still feels his loss every day and that will never change. But I will tell you this, there is a triumph that comes with that pain and there is a premium that comes with that loss. It's called legacy. I know firsthand how powerful this idea of legacy is and I've seen the potential it has to redefine our national character. During those first two years after Landon's death, it was a battle to get through each day. I was now at a point where I didn't know who I was or what I was supposed to be doing with my life. Uh, I'd say my transition was just as scary as my entrance to the Navy. It takes grit and resiliency and strength to be able to transition at any point in your life. It was kind of upsetting because I felt like I didn't have like a much of a purpose anymore. We want people to know that veterans and families of the fallen are leaders within their communities. They want to inspire and motivate people. His death has inspired me to reinvent myself in a way that I didn't think possible. And this amazing foundation was the conduit for me to do so. You're doing something that's helping you to live again. I was feeling a little empty before the trip, and I'm so full of energy, of emotions, of everything. If not me, then who is at the center of everything that we do? If I don't go out and help clean up the community or plant trees like we're doing today, who's going to do it? Our military community has yet again demonstrated that when outside forces threaten our country, America will meet that challenge head on and respond with the strength of our national character. At even our weakest moments, America's character is at its best. We should do what we can to give a little part in return for the sacrifices and everything the veterans do for us. We act with integrity. We do the right thing even when the cameras are off and no one is watching. We lend a hand of kindness and an offer of support. I've personally done so much healing, it's a way of honoring. It just feels good to feel alive. Feel free to stand where you are and applaud what we have seen tonight. I cannot tell you what a tremendous honor truly it has been to be here in the company of heroes, General Dunford, Secretary Rumsfeld, Red, Diego, it's been a remarkable evening, and I think that as we uh, close this evening and, and, and reflect already upon the remarkable work of the Travis Manning Foundation, we should have maybe a toast. We'll just raise whatever you have. I see that there is bezel, Hayden, uh, bourbon on the tables. There are no shot glasses, so if you would really like to honor Janet, feel free to turn the bottle up, as you heard earlier, or don't. But here's what we're toasting to. As you know, today is December 7th. Oh, good. Bottles are already going up. Hold your glass. As you know, today is December 7th, which marks the 76th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor and the U.S.'s entrance into World War II. It's also a time when we remember the 67th anniversary of the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir during the Korean War. I know it. I did a documentary on it called The Frozen Chosen. During that two-week struggle for survival in a drastic sub-zero temperatures, many Marines in battle credit the appearance of a small star in the sky, which helped them to continue their fight. One of those Marines included a man named Joseph Dunford Sr., the father of General Dunford, our guest of honor tonight. 
So bearing in mind the giants whose shoulders we stand on, as Ryan noted in her speech, and adding the chosen few to that list, I ask you to raise that glass with me. And here's what we say. To the fallen, may we keep faith with them and honor what they have protected. To the living, may we strive with one another to keep our communities and country forging ahead. And to the legacies, may we honor them, may we build them. For if not us, then who? Cheers. And on behalf of the Travis Payne Foundation, thanks. Have a great night. Beat Army, beat Navy. I don't care. It's going to be a good game. Just carry on the legacy. And don't forget to get your Spartan pin. Thank you very much.